Hey, welcome to Rocket Stove 2020, where we're sort of diving into how rocket stoves uh, work. And this is Aprovecho Research Center. Dr. Larry Winiarski invented the rocket stove in about 1982. Last week, we looked at time and temperature, and now we're looking at mixing. So this is a diffusion flame. It's a laminar flame, which means that the um, fuel, the gas is going into the flame. But guess what? It's not a clean flame. It's a dirty flame. It is only burning at the outside where the oxygen is interacting with the fuel. And inside, the oxygen can't get in there so it requires mixing to get clean. And we're gonna show you in a bunch of different rocket stoves how that works. Okay, rocket stoves. Um, sometimes people try to add natural draft secondary air to rocket stoves. And to be successful, secondary air jets need to meet right in the middle. So they need to cover uh, the fuel and uh, go not across the top of the flame, but they need to go into the side of the flame to work. And they have to have enough velocity to penetrate all the way across the opening. So here would be an example of a rocket stove riser with secondary air. Here's an example of one without. And here is a rocket stove without secondary air holes. And here is a rocket stove with secondary air. And we're going to light them up. And then we're going to show you what force draft looks like. So here's a rocket with, that's attempting to have uh, secondary air jets that will mix the wood gas, the flame, and the air. And then here's one uh, without secondary air. When Dr. Winiarski designed the rocket stove, he thought that secondary air really wouldn't help that much. And I'm afraid that he's probably right with natural draft. This is what we're looking for in a rocket stove. This is actually a T-LED because it's easier to show you that the air jets are going all the way into the middle and so we're covering the uh, entire fuel bed uh, or the riser in terms of a rocket stove with air jets and um, so any uh, gases that are coming up any smoke that are that is coming up from the wood is getting mixed into flame wow look especially when the flame is this high. Where it's burning is at the outside where the oxygen is interacting with the wood gas. But this is a very dirty flame. Uh, there's nothing, the oxygen isn't able to get inside because there isn't mixing. And so both natural draft and forced draft jets of air are attempting to fix that problem. When you see big laminar flames like this, you know that's pretty dirty. All right, so this rocket stove has secondary air jets. Uh, the air is going up alongside the outside of the uh, combustion chamber. And uh, you can see that the air jets are trying to mix, but man, I'll tell you, it's hard. There just isn't enough force uh, to really do much mixing. And, and that's why uh, secondary air, you, it's not adding oxygen. You have plenty of oxygen going into the door. It's that you need forceful jets to break through the walls of those laminar flames and create uh, cleaner burning. Here's a, another rocket stove with a thermal electric generator making jets and um, this is doing a lot better. Uh, there's a lot of mixing going on there. It's uh, not as much as the T-LUD, but um, really 
really quite uh, quite a lot of mixing. And for a rocket, because it has that thermoelectric generator, that is able to blast uh, force-trapped jets into the flame and help to clean up those laminar flames. I wanted to note that I've got this thing jammed full of fuel and what those secondary air jets are doing is it's really keeping the flame inside the combustion chamber and so that's great that is um, helping to get the amount of time that you need the really high temperature that you need and the mixing to be able to get cleaner combustion now imagine if we had really forceful jets, like you saw with the T-LUD, going into the side of the flame, what that does is it makes a high pressure front right here and it kills the draft. And so that's what's hard with a rocket. You have this big door and you can't uh, blow really forceful jets across the whole top without starting to get that backdraft and then you have smoke coming out the door. That's what's really different between a T-LUD and a uh, rocket. We aren't done experimenting yet, but when we put jets of air into the side of the flame and they were strong enough to go all the way across this riser tube, we started to see uh, backdrafting out the door. And so although that works really well in the T-LUD, we changed and had the air jets come up into the um, into the charcoal and then into the um, the wood sticks and so this is um, like they do in industry but um, we think maybe eventually both bottom air and then top air side air may be the uh, best way to, to uh, cut down smoke. Uh, so there you go. Uh, we have now looked at mixing and we've explored mixing with uh, natural draft and with force draft.